Hello, my name is um, David Holkman. I'm working at Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris and I would like to introduce my group about applied mathematics and uh, computational biology. The goal of our research is to study the function of microdomains in uh, cellular biology in normal and pathological conditions. We aim to um, derive uh, physical models from a uh, first principle. So once we have the um, physical model, the next thing to do is to develop asymptotical methods which uh, usually consist of making asymptotics on partial differential equation and also to study specifically uh, stochastic processes. We also develop a numerical simulation and algorithm to um, test the uh, physical models. And finally, our approach allows us uh, um, to extract features from large uh, data, which is called today the big data, and not only to extract parameters, but also features that can uh, be revealed through the uh, analysis we develop. So, to start with, I would like to introduce to you what we have been developed uh, for the past 10 years, which is the narrow escape uh, and dire strait theory. So, what this is about, it's the following question. How long it takes for a Brownian particle starting anywhere inside the domain to move by Brownian motion. It is reflected everywhere except on a small patch which is represented by uh, the, green sp the green line. So the particle is reflected until it hits here this patch. And so the question we've been interested in is how long it takes, what is the time or the mean first passage time to reach this uh, specific uh, um, spot located on the uh, perimeter here, this is in dimension 2 and also we have the same question in dimension 3 so this is called, uh, this is actually a question in what is called the mean first passage time problem mean first passage time and to solve this question this can be formulated by solving a partial differential equation which is the following if the process we are looking at as a diffusion coefficient d then what we need to solve is d Laplacian u equal minus 1 inside for any point x inside the domain omega so the domain omega this is the domain we are just discussing so this is the equation that we have to solve with the condition that u equals 0 on the absorbing patch which we are calling d omega a so this is on d omega a and no flux which means d u d n equals 0 on the rest of the boundary that is everywhere except the absorbing patch and the question is basically the same in dimension 3 so just to give you um, the results we found uh, through asymptotic analysis that the time tau to escape is proportional to the area here pi d is a diffusion coefficient and we have here log of 1 over epsilon where epsilon is actually the ratio of the absorbing to the total boundary in the limit of this being small. The interesting, uh, the interesting issue is that in dimension 3 it's not log that prevail, rather the time depends on A which is the size of the um, radius, this is exactly the radius of the small absorbing patch. So the time goes like 1 over A and then other parameters such as the curvature this is given by this H0 
and uh, then comes another term a log a plus a term of order 1. So we also extended this uh, theory to what happened when you can have for example not only one hole but two holes the uh, all of these um, results are summarized in the following uh, article that uh, you can uh, that I have added here the reference um, for Green's function for matching asymptotics uh, there is also uh, results interesting results in dimension 3 which are um, described here when we have a domain with the cusp that is when it is very hard for a Brownian particle to escape instead of being just like 1 over a as you have seen here the time is proportional to a at the power 3 halves <coughs> so this is the example of a funnel where it's very hard to escape and to reach here is um, the tip and in dimension 2 let me say one thing is that although it was log of 1 over epsilon in that case it's 1 over square root epsilon when you have to escape from a domain where the absorbing boundary is exactly at the end of a cusp now I would like to be more general after this uh, uh, introduction of and, and this example of the narrow escape problem is to give example about the project that we are interested in here in the group. The first project that we started uh, more than 10 years ago is about um, modeling phototransduction and how photoreceptors that are packed in uh, um, the retina can transform uh, uh, a photon that arrives in this uh, um, one of the disks here and transform into a, a light a signal that will uh, finally uh, lead to a cell uh, change of uh, voltage membrane potential. Another uh, example is um, how the nucleus and the cytoplasm is organized and so here we are basically using polymer physics to better understand especially for the nucleus that you have seen here that this picture is really an artist concept because chromosomes are really uh, not just floating around but have some, some structure that define their function so another example of project that um, we've been uh, working on for the past five years is that how if you have here a virus inside the cytoplasm how the virus move in the complex network that is represented here of uh, um, the cytoskeleton organization another project um, that is connected with our uh, experimental partner is to better understand synaptic transmission and precisely to derive diffusion law when, when receptors are released from a vesicle, how they diffuse here in the synaptic cleft and, and bind to receptors, how this depends on the distribution and the motion of those receptors here located in the postsynaptic terminal. We are also very much interested in uh, the interaction between neuron cells and glial cells, so usually glial cells can form protrusion here under some specific condition in general, this is a general case where the located far away and molecules here can, especially glutamate, can be extruded inside the uh, glial cells. And finally, we are very much interested, and we are uh, keeping continuing, we keep continuing that on each project is to do asymptotics on partial differential equation. We study uh, specifically stochastic processes and their analysis. So now I would like to give you an example of um, the type of, of question we can formulate and uh, we have been uh, um, working on for the past uh, years. Suppose we can model the DNA molecules and approximate this as a polymer which is a collection of beads connected here by a spring. So you have basically beads and you connect them through spring and this is the chance that you can get 
And now you're interested in the following questions. Suppose each bead can be modeled by the following stochastic equation, where you have the a random term, and you have here the potential, which is due to the uh, neighboring uh, bead, that is, if you have one bead, it is connected to the neighbors through the spring. And this is the two spring that creates the forces to the f this following bead. And so what we've been um, looking at in the past is using this type of stochastic equation to estimate the mean time it takes for the, the red the red bead here to enter into the vicinity of the blue one in the radius epsilon. And so we found that in dimension 2 it is associated, it is proportional to the number of beads, uh, the diffusion coefficient d, epsilon, which is the uh, radius here, b is the mean square uh, displacement of um, the beads, let's say beads 1 and 2 at equilibrium, that is the mean square displacement give you this size here, b. And then, it, so we have n in here, and then we have a second term which is proportional to n square. So this is for dimension 2. In dimension 3, instead of having log, as we have here, we have 1 over epsilon. And the second term here continue to exist. So why this problem uh, turn out to be relevant? Because genes can be uh, activated, or in this case here repressed, when a loop here brings um, this repressor exactly at the point where it is needed to prevent the promoter to uh, the transcription factor to generate uh, the um, messenger RNA that would be uh, created. Another um, type of problem we are very much interested in is double strand DNA break. And specifically, can we extract from data the motion of a break to understand how the cell can uh, be successful to repair it? Another direction of our research is to analyze um, a very high density of a trajectory generated on uh, the surface of a single neuron. So you have here examples of small trajectory which are usually composed of about seven consecutive points um, at a sample time of 50 uh, milliseconds. This is generated um, by our collaborator, the group of uh, Daniel Schocke in Bordeaux. And so the question that we will have been interested in is can we reconstruct from this trajectory, the um, can you reconstruct the dynamics that was underlying the this motion? So we found basically that um, using the Smolkowski limit of the Langevin equation, which is x dot plus a potential well equals uh, the Brownian motion that we could basically identify and reconstruct potential wells which are basically uh, usually uh, described you know, as an attractor and here using just the description of a parabola uh, parabolic potential wells we found that this potential well is exactly the feature that uh, um, we could observe here and, and, and at different positions so Basically, you can reconstruct using stochastic analysis feature that could have not been uh, seen before. To be more specific on the question of uh, photoreceptors, as you know, we have in the retina two types of photoreceptor re rods here and cones. And upon the arrival of a photon, that hit here one of the rhodopsin molecule on the disc, the membrane potential changes, as you can see in these peaks, showing the response to a single photon. And when you average over many uh, realization, you see that either you have failures that are represented in here, in this part here, where nothing is happening, 
or you have here example of the response. So what we have been working on for the past uh, couple of years is can we from the biochemistry where single photons um, activate the rhodopsin and then you have a cascade of chemical reaction that leads ultimately to the closing of these channels. So can you from that derive what is the noise generated by the cell and can we compute really the signal to noise ratio? So we have basically develop uh, methods based on uh, um, partial differential equations and uh, stochastic analysis to calculate what's the noise generated in the cells and what's the signal. So just to uh, summarize uh, briefly uh, the our group, so we started at the Weizmann Institute in the Department of Applied Math Mathematics and Computer Science a couple of years ago. Then the group was relocated at Ecole Normale in 2006. Today the group is composed mainly of uh, student postdocs and PhD students. We have uh, uh, we accept uh, master students about one or two per year and also we have a summer program uh, where we accept one student at the undergrad level for two months a year. So to summarize, uh, don't hesitate to contact uh, to contact us. We have also a website where you can see our publication and the description of our project. So you can use this following email address, david.olkman at biology.ns, to contact us. So thank you for listening to our group presentation. And um, feel free to contact us. We'll be happy to answer you and to give you more information about what we are doing.